Welcome back. This is OpenStax chapter 10, number 28. In this problem, there is a sphere rolling over here. It has a velocity of 8 meters per second, and we have to figure out what height it gets to. All right, again, we don't know the mass and we don't know the radius, and I'll show you how that cancels out. So I made a list of what's given. There's not much. All we know is that it's a sphere and it has a velocity of 8 meters per second. Um, the moment of inertia of this sphere is 2 thirds mr squared. I don't make my students memorize that one. You might want to check with your professor and see, is that something's going to be given or is that something you're going to need to look up? If it's a college board test, they'll just tell you. So this is a hollow sphere. It has a moment of inertia of 2 thirds mr squared. All right, the other formulas we're going to need. Um, over here, it's doing two things at the same time. It's moving forward, which is translational kinetic energy. That formula is 1 half mv squared. And it's also simultaneously spinning. That's rotational kinetic energy. That's 1 half. Oops, I wrote the wrong formula down here. I omega squared. Okay. The other formula we're going to need in order to find the height, we're going to have to find the gravitational potential energy at the end. That's mass times gravity times height. All right, so I'll show you how to put all this together. And even though we don't know the mass or the radius, we can still get the height. It's a conservation of energy problem. I'm going to start off and say all the energy that it has at the beginning will be equal to all the energy that it has at the top of the hill when it comes to a stop. So initially, it's got two kinds of energy. It's got translational kinetic energy and rotational kinetic energy. And all that energy is going to get converted into gravitational potential energy. So mathematically, it looks like this. 1 half mv squared for my kinetic energy plus 1 half i omega squared for my rotational kinetic energy is equal to mgh for my gravitational potential energy. Well, when I plug in my formula for moment of inertia, the 2 thirds mr squared, that's going to make all the r's and the omegas go away. So it looks like this. 1 half mv squared plus 1 half times 2 thirds mr squared. There's my moment of inertia. Now for omega squared, I'm going to call that v squared over r squared. For that formula, I said the velocity is r omega. And if I just called omega w, sorry about that, I do that sometimes. Technically, it's angular velocity. I sometimes call it w, but it's officially omega. And all that energy gets converted into gravitational potential energy. M G H. All right, here's where everything cancels out. Mass, gone. Radius, gone. So we don't even need to know those. And this comes out to be 1 half V squared plus 1 sixth V squared is equal to G H. So let's see. All right, 1 half plus 1 sixth comes out to be 5 sixths. Okay, so I'm going to simplify this. I take 1 half v squared plus 1 third v squared, and that comes out to be 5 sixths v squared, which is equal to gravity times height. That's the height that we're trying to find. So I'll rearrange this for you. Turns out that the height will be 5 v squared over 6 g, and that comes out to be 5.3 meters. All right, for the second part of this problem, they said imagine that it's rolling, or not rolling, it's just moving forward, but not rolling. It's just sliding up this hill. So there's no rotational kinetic energy. It's just sliding along, but not spinning. All right, well, that's even easier this time because we don't need to worry about rotational kinetic energy. We don't need to worry about moment of inertia. We'd get the same answer if this was a cube and it was just sliding up the hill. When it starts out, all its energy is translational kinetic energy. That gets converted into gravitational potential energy. So mathematically, I've got 1 half mv squared equals mgh. Again, mass cancels, and this time the height is going to be v squared over 2g. Put that into my calculator, and that comes out to be 3.2 meters. All right, so this is a good way to kind of understand what is rotational kinetic energy, because the first time when it rolled up the hill, it got to a height of 5.3. The second time when it was going that fast but sliding, it only got to 3.2. So it looks like the first time it had more energy. Where did that energy come from? It was the rotational kinetic energy that it had the first time. The second time it didn't have that, that's why it only got to a height of 3.2. All right, there you go. I'll see you in the next problem.